In this lecture, we will have a look at the demand function for a discrete good, a good that is not infinitely divisible. In this example, good 1 will be discrete, only consumable in integer quantities, while good 2 is infinitely divisible. In analyzing a discrete good, it's common to normalize the price of the other good, which we tend to think of as a bundle of other goods, to be equal to 1. P1 is then really the relative price of good 1, relative to the bundle. Normalizing P2 equal to 1, our budget line is P1x1 plus x2 is equal to m. Let's introduce a new concept called reservation prices. With well-behaved preferences, there will be a price where a consumer will be indifferent between consuming 0 units of good 1 and 1 unit of good 1. This price will be called reservation price 1 and it will be denoted by R1. Whatever she decides, the remaining income is spent on good 2. Similarly, the reservation price 2, R2, is the price where she is indifferent between 1 unit of good 1 and 2 units of good 1. In general notation, the reservation price Rn is the price where she is indifferent between consuming n-1 units of good 1 and n units of good 1. Here, n is an arbitrary positive integer. If good 1 is an ordinary good, then the demand for good 1 will increase when the price of the good falls. So if R1 is the price where she is indifferent between 0 and 1 units, and R2 is the price where she is indifferent between 1 and 2 units, then R2 must be lower than R1, if the good is normal. In the same way, R3 must be less than R2, and so on. Let's have a look at the demand curve for a discrete ordinary good. Here is a picture. We can consume 0 units of good 1, 1 unit of good 1, 2 units of good 1, 3 units of good 1, and so on, but nothing in between. Here is the first reservation price, R1. At this price, the consumer is indifferent between 0 units and 1 unit of good 1. Therefore, both these points must belong to the demand curve. The second reservation price, R2, is lower than R1. At this price, she's indifferent between 1 and 2 units of good 1, and we have the following two points on the demand curve. I've also added reservation price 3, at which she's indifferent between 2 and 3 units of good 1. The next reservation price, R4, is lower than R3, and so on. What would be the demand for good 1 if P1 was above reservation price 1? If the good is ordinary, then demand must be zero at such prices. If P1 is in between R1 and R2, then the demand for good 1 will be 1. If the price is between R2 and R3, then the demand will be equal to 2, and so on. We have now traced out parts of the demand curve up to x1 equal to 3. So the following will hold for optimal choice x1. If p1 is equal to r1, then x1 is equal to 0 or 1. If p1 is equal to r2, then x1 is equal to 1 or 2. In general notation, if p1 is equal to rn for an arbitrary positive integer n, then x1 is equal to n minus 1 or n. She is indifferent between consuming n minus 1 and n units of good 1. If P1 is greater than the largest reservation price R1, then X1 is equal to 0. If P1 is in between R1 and R2, then X1 is 1. If P1 is in between R2 and R3, then X1 is 2. In general notation, if P1 is in between Rn and Rn plus 1, then X1 is equal to n. There is another way we can look at the optimal choice X1. X1 is equal to 1 if and only if P1 is in between R2 and R1. X1 is equal to 2 if and only if P1 is in between R3 and R2. In general terms, X1 is equal to n if and only if P1 is in between Rn plus 1 and Rn. The fact that we are indifferent between two different quantities when the price is equal to a reservation price for a discrete good has implications for the utility function. We know that if P1 is equal to the reservation price Rn, then the consumer is indifferent between consuming n minus 1 and n units of good 1. Let's look at both bundles keeping P1 equal to Rn. 
she will always spend the remaining income on good 2, which has price 1, that is x2 is equal to m minus p1 x1. With p1 equal to rn and x1 equal to n, x2 will be equal to m minus rn times n. Similarly, if x1 is equal to n minus 1, then x2 is equal to m minus rn times n minus 1. We know that she's indifferent between these two bundles. This is how rn is defined. Therefore, the utility of the second bundle where she's consuming n minus 1 units of good 1 must be the same as the utility of the first bundle where she's consuming n units of good 1. This restriction will hold for every natural number n. If the utility function is known, we will be able to find all the reservation prices by solving this equation. The analysis of a discrete good can be greatly simplified if the utility function is quasi-linear and linear in the good which is not discrete, and whose price we have normalized to 1. In this case, we write the utility function u as v of x1 plus x2, assuming that v is strictly increasing and strictly concave, which it will be if preferences are well behaved. Let's look again at the restriction on the utility function we found by realizing that we are indifferent between two bundles when the price is equal to one of the reservation prices. We have this fairly complex equation. When p1 is equal to reservation price n, then the utility of consuming n minus 1 units of good 1 must be equal to the utility of consuming n units of good 1 if the consumer spends the remaining income on good 2. If the utility function is v of x1 plus x2, the left hand side of this equation simplifies to v of n minus 1 plus x2, where x2 is equal to m minus rn times n minus 1. The right hand side of the equation simplifies to v of n plus x2, or v of n plus m minus rn times n. This equation can be simplified. We can cancel m and rn times n on both sides. Moving v of n minus 1 over to the right hand side, we have solved for reservation price n. rn is equal to v of n minus v of n minus 1. The tenth reservation price is simply equal to the increase in v from increasing our consumption of good 1 by 1 unit from 9 to 10. For example, if v of x1 is square root of x1, then r1 is equal to the square root of 1 minus the square root of 0, which is 1. The second reservation price, r2, is equal to the square root of 2 minus the square root of 1, which is approximately 0.414, and so on. Since v is strictly increasing and strictly concave, rn will always be positive and it will be decreasing in n. If v of n is square root of n, then v of 0 is equal to 0 and r1 is equal to v of 1. In general, if v of 0 is not 0, it's common to normalize the utility function such that v of 0 is 0. Remember, we can add any constant to our utility function since this is a monotonic transformation.